Hey guys, I'm John from Switchbird, and this is going to be a very quick introduction to 8P10 DLC, or Application of Person Messaging over 10 Digit Long Codes. Now, that probably sounds like a lot of alphabet soup or industry jargon, and it is, but um, the 8P10 DLC registration process adopted by mobile carriers in 2021, uh, to my mind, really represents uh, an opportunity and a green light for businesses to uh, embrace and use what's arguably the most powerful communication channel of our time, that's text messaging, SMS, um, to reach and build relationships with their customers. So if you've been on the sidelines, uh, unsure of whether and how to um, text message your leads, prospects, and customers, whether you've uh, been on the sidelines wondering about the legality of doing so or the um, volume you can send, right? A to P 10 DLC registration gives you a clear uh, on-ramp into uh, messaging customers legitimately. Um, and you know, if you've been on the sidelines because all you've seen are bad examples of how to do bulk messaging and SMS marketing, you should understand that this is not that, right? A to P 10 DLC carves out the space for brands and business owners to message with their uh, customers <clears throat> in a way that's uh, more conversational, that supports two-way messaging, that's really uh, more along the lines of what makes text messaging so powerful in the first place. So I'm gonna look quickly at what A to P 10 DLC is, who should register, why you should register, and then we'll look at um, how you can very quickly and easily register using the tools we've created at Switchbird. So without further ado, uh, what's A to P? Uh, it refers to application to person messaging as differentiated from P to P or person to person messaging. Now, <clears throat> this is a little confusing. You should really think of this as all business messaging, right? Whether you send uh, customer care messages, automated chatbot type messages, uh, broadcast messages, appointment reminders, you know, you're likely using software to facilitate that. You know, so for example, if you send any message uh, via a Twilio number, that's considered an A to P message, right? So application to person messaging is really business messaging. Anything that you would want to um, scale or use software to produce is going to be A to P. Um, and if you are transacting those messages or sending and receiving those messages over a 10 digit long code or a local phone number in the US and Canada, then you're doing uh, 10 DLC. So uh, this is you know as differentiated from five to six digit short codes, which are traditionally used for bulk messaging and SMS marketing and things like you know text XYZ to this number to donate ten dollars to the Red Cross or whatever, um, and also differentiated from toll free numbers, right? So um, 10 DLC numbers really have a lot of advantages because you're uh, transacting with the customer on a recognizable area code. You've got a ton of inventory to use for, you know, not just like vanity numbers and that kind of thing, but uh, really to give, you know, everyone on your team their own uh, SMS enabled number so that, you know, you can really have uh, engagements with customers that resemble uh, P2P conversations, which are so uh, powerful, which are, you know, the, these are the things that drive open and engagement rates for text messaging. It's not, you know, that everybody is sitting around waiting to receive a, you know, broadcast from a big brand. It's, it's that uh, we use text messaging to engage uh, with our friends, family, and the brands and businesses we care about to get things done. And so that is really what accounts for the power of text messaging. And that is really um, bound to uh, local numbers and uh, the kind of messaging you might do uh, in an A to P 10 DLC scenario. So uh, how is this different from what came in the past? Um, originally, all of these uh, local numbers for you know uh, landline, VoIP, and mobile uh, were intended for person-to-person -person traffic. But what carriers have found is that you know, not only are businesses using uh, local numbers to message with consumers, and so we have to account for that in some way, but in fact, that 
creates value both for the businesses uh, and the consumers, right? So um, uh, we all have an interest in having an ecosystem of uh, you know trust and transparency uh, for messaging uh, over these local phone numbers that uh, allows us to you know mitigate the ill effects of spam uh, and and whatnot, but you know, still uh, enables businesses to have conversational uh, exchanges with their customers and uh, have their customers be able to reach out to them via, you know, messaging and do things like call deflection and, you know, uh, automated self-serve types of uh, messaging and, you know, all that stuff. So um, that's why we've got this new uh, standard for uh, registering your business for A to P 10 DLC. The uh, registration applies to really any business who sends or wants to send text messages over a local phone number in the U.S. and Canada. And like I said, if you use Twilio uh, for texting, uh, you would want to register because you're doing A to P 10 DLC messaging. Um, and What's in, entailed in messaging is really, or in registering is really just providing carriers with some basic information about who you are and the kinds of messages you send. And we'll look at exactly what they require, but it's really not that onerous an ask. There's no cost for starter brands, which are brands that uh, use up to 3,000 messages a day and up to uh, six uh, phone number or up to five, I guess, phone numbers uh, to send those those messages. And then beyond that, there are some low costs, a $44 registration fee, $10 campaign fee uh, for a standard brand that's above those volumes. But if you're below those volumes, like most of us are, uh, you're not going to uh, spend anything. And if you're above those volumes, it's going to be worth uh, the small uh, registration fees. Now, why would you want to register in the first place? Well, um, the industry is really moving towards a model that is, you know, less of a wild west where, you know, it's kind of relying on confusion and, you know, uh, litigation of different cases to kind of figure out what's allowable and what's not to a, a more sort of structured, um, top down, if you will, uh, approach to organizing, uh, messaging, uh, allocating trust to different parties and so on. So uh, when you register, you are given, um, you, well, you're identifying yourself to carriers, your business to carriers and introducing, you know, some transparency as to, you know, who, who you are and uh, what you intend, the messages you intend to send. And in exchange, uh, you receive higher throughput and better deliverability of those messages, essentially. So, uh, even though today um, carriers are not too harsh in their uh, filtering practices on you know businesses that uh, don't register and send messages over uh, local uh, 10 DLC routes uh, for the future it's going to make a lot of sense uh, I think to uh, register and start building trust with carriers so that your messages continue to enjoy uh, high throughput and deliverability. And so uh, how do you do this? Well, I'm going to show you our approach at Switchbird. Uh, you can uh, register in a few uh, clicks with some simple information. Uh, you can even bring your uh, Twilio numbers from your own account and register those using our platform. So let's look at how that might work. So if I'm here in my um, you know, multi-inbox uh, Switchbird account. Let's create a new inbox and get it registered, right? So I'm going to just go and create a new inbox here, uh, and I'll just skip through this uh, stuff here. I'll just create an inbox under an existing organization. I'm not going to connect it to Google or anything, uh, and I'm going to use an existing phone number, uh, and we'll just go through here and set this up. And I'm just not going to uh, worry about these details, but just to show you, if you wanted to um, bring your own Twilio numbers into this inbox, you could either at this point when you're creating it or afterwards, uh, we just need the typical account SID and account token. We'll find your account uh, in Twilio and allow you to uh, uh, bring those phone numbers over to your Switchbird inbox. But I'm gonna create an inbox uh, just like this. 
Um, and let's see if that goes through, and it does. So uh, we've got our new inbox here. We're ready to go. And to register it, I'm going to go to our settings tab here under the numbers uh, submenu. And you'll see here that we've got our business profile and ADP 10 DLC registration box with um, some uh, some 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 choices here right from the get-go. So are you a starter or standard brand? This is where those thresholds come into play. Uh, into play. <clears throat> if you're sending fewer than 3,000 messages per day uh, and use fewer, you know, five or fewer phone numbers, uh, then you are a starter brand. And if you're not, you're a standard brand. Um, starter uh, brand registration is the simplest. Uh, standard brand will ask you for a few more specifics, but you know, like tax ID, for example. Um, but we'll just go through the starter brand registration because that's instantaneous. Uh, and then we can always expand to a standard brand down the road. So um, a starter brand is just going to ask us for some basic contact information, including uh, name, email, and phone number. So I'll just do that. And uh, and then a physical address, uh, which must be a physical address, can't be a P.O. box. So we'll just do that here. And uh, a couple of example messages. So, um, you know, as a starter brand, our use case is always going to be mixed. Um, and so that can include, you know, anything from customer care to promotions, reminders, et cetera. So you could change this description if you have uh, something different in mind, but we use this uh, default description all the time. Uh, and then just put in a few sample messages. So uh, for customer care, it might be something like, hi, John, how are, uh, not how are you, but um, how can we help you? Uh, and you know maybe we're sending appointment reminders, so you know just a reminder: your appointment is coming up at 1 p.m. EST. All right, so these are a couple of sample messages. We'll update our profile here with that new data, and then we'll just step through the process here to uh, validate, evaluate, and submit our starter profile. So validating it is going to be very quick. It's just going to ensure that we've filled out uh, all of the all of the fields down here that are required. Uh, evaluating it should also be pretty quick because uh, what Twilio does is it will uh, put the um, uh, data into review uh, and uh, essentially wait for you to uh, submit it so long as it's you know complies with what they're expecting to get you'll get this in review uh, notice here and wait they'll wait for you to submit it at which time uh, they'll do a bunch of checks on it which might take uh, you know a few seconds to a few minutes uh, and then you should be approved so if I submit this now uh, we should get this into uh, some kind of better state here. So this looks like it's taking some time. So it's probably going through some checks to uh, approve it. Uh, okay, so it's in progress now. Um, so we can come back uh, later or we can, uh, you know, kind of impatiently <laughs> check our status here uh, and see uh, if we're approved yet. Uh, and uh, we're getting there. So um, still in progress. Let's try one more time here. Okay, let me pause this for a second. And there it is. So just took a couple more uh, minutes to ultimately get verified. And now we're good to go, right? We've got our starter brand um, registered, approved, and verified uh, with, with Twilio. And again, we could, you know, we could add uh, additional Twilio numbers from another account uh, if we wanted. No problem. Uh, run through sort of the same process and get those uh, attached to an approved 
uh, sender. So um, that's it. You know, that's what's required to uh, register your brand or business for 8P 10 DLC. Like I said, there's a few more things required if you register as a standard brand, uh, but it, it, you know, it's not that onerous. It might take a little longer because they they're probably reviewed uh, more manually. Um, but that's all that that's all that there is to it, and uh, that puts you in good stead uh, with carriers when you go on to. Uh, use your um, phone numbers to message with leads, prospects, customers, and really build your business uh, on the backbone of arguably the most powerful communication channel of our time. All right. Cheers, guys.